the great lasting products of the National Commission was a small report, which is now referred to as the Belmont Report, uh, that responds to a legislated mandate uh, that went something like this commission uh, should look at uh, the principles of ethics that uh, should govern human subjects research. Uh, I was not directly involved in the Belmont Report. My colleague here at the Kennedy Institute, Tom Beecham, was involved in the staff and played a central role in the writing of that report. The Belmont Report uh, looks at basic principles of ethics and how they shape uh, the judgments that guide human subjects protection. Uh, as a committee produced document, uh, there's some rough edges in the report. Uh, it's not an accident that uh, the Belmont Report has principles that look very much like the principles that show up in the book of Tom Beecham and Jim Childress, The Principles of Biomedical Ethics. Uh, on the other hand, some might note that the principles of biomedical ethics have four principles, while the Belmont Report has three, and essentially that is a dispute over how you should handle the ethical pr principle of producing consequences. Tom Beecham, I think correctly, proposes two principles dealing with the maximizing of consequences. Beneficence, the maximizing of good consequences, and non-maleficence, the minimizing of harms. Uh, he insists to this day that they're two separate principles, and by treating them as two separate principles, we have a language that permits us to address questions that can't be addressed if we combine these two consequence maximizing principles into a single concept of utility maximizing. Uh, utility maximizing uh, requires that we have a theory of how we combine our estimates of the benefits and our estimate of the harms and you really need the language of non-maleficence and beneficence to carry out a discussion about the proper way of combining benefits and harms. Uh, when I teach medical students, I teach here from time to time at Georgetown, I've taught medical students uh, that were going into Albany Medical College for over 30 years, and I teach all the medical students at St. George's University in Grenada. I've taught probably 15,000 medical students in my day, and particularly large classes in Grenada. I have a whole section on the issue of different ways that we can combine benefit and harm, and how you get to different answers depending on your strategy for combining benefits and harms. I use an example of a hypothetical uh, research question uh, that compares a standard chemotherapy with an experimental four-drug regimen. And it turns out uh, if you hypothesize some pretty plausible estimates of benefit in harm, at harms in the two treatment harms, one way of combining benefits and harms uh, leads you to the conclusion that the high-risk, high-gain research arm is utility maximizing. Another strategy leads you to the conclusion that the two arms with exactly the same data the two arms are equally balanced. They're in equipoise, we would say, and therefore it's ethically justified to a randomized trial. There's a third way of combining benefits and harms that is summarized in the uh, old slogan, primum no nocere, first of all, do no harm, that says your first duty is to minimize harms. And if that's your strategy, the standard treatment 
is morally required of you because it poses less threat of harm. So just by working with concepts of beneficence and non-maleficence, uh, the two utility maximizing principles of the Beecham Childress uh, four principles, uh, you end up with the conclusion you're morally obliged to give your patient the research arm, you're morally obliged to give your patient only the standard treatment, or you're in equipoise and therefore you can justify randomization. And all of that hinges on the discussion of your theory for combining benefits and harms. Uh, I think it's an intriguing problem. One of the flaws of the Belmont report uh, that it doesn't really give us the linguistic tools uh, to carry on the discussion of the proper way of combining benefits and harms the way the Beecham and Childress formulation uh, would do it. I've always, in my own ethical theory, uh, insisted that beneficence and non-maleficence are independent principles, and uh, many uh, include this idea that Avoiding harm is a prior principle or a principle that you first must satisfy. Um, that turns out to be a very conservative principle, one that if taken literally you would never do any research with because you'd always stick with the tried and true uh, rather than the experimental where you'd have to concede because you don't know the answer, that's why it's an experiment. Doing something that's experimental poses extra threat of harm, and by maximizing or prioritizing non-maleficence, you have a duty not to do that harm. You're forced to do the very conservative standard treatment, uh, not to be a researcher, I suppose. <laughs>